Are you worried that you might be overwatering your seedlings? Or are you looking for a way to start your seedlings that doesn't cost much at all? Or are you only starting a few plants and you don't need a big grow operation with lots of equipment? Or are you thinking about dabbling with hydroponics? Well, join me today as I discuss the double cup method for starting seeds. Hi, I'm Gardner Scott, and I have started many, many seeds indoors over the years using many different seed starting methods. And the double cup method is among the easiest and the cheapest way to start your seeds. Quite simply, you take a cup, fill it with a good potting mix, and this is where you start your seed and your seedling grows. And then you take this first cup and put it into the second one. And of course, you're wondering, well, why do I need that second cup? Because when we're growing our seedlings, we want to avoid the roots becoming oversaturated with water. We can drown our plants. We need drainage holes so that excess water drains away from our plants. The second cup collects that excess water. And yes, these are just solo cups. These are the kind of cups that some of us of a certain age might have played beer pong with. They're the ones you buy for a party. And these are the ones that are most commonly used. But you can use any cup as long as one is able to nestle inside the other. You have a lot of options when it comes to making the holes in the bottom of your cup. I like to take my utility knife and just cut little triangles in the bottom. And depending on how busy I am, I'll either put four triangles or three triangles. These will be the drainage holes. And so with these holes cut, I'm ready to start planting in here. Now you have lots of options when it comes to making your holes. You could use something like a soldering iron or a wood burning tool and melt holes into the bottom. You can take a nail and warm it up on your stove using pliers and push that in to make a hole. Or if you're doing a lot at the same time, make a stack and then take your drill and drill the holes into it. All of those will work. I like making these cuts because it makes for a bigger hole. At some point, assuming the seedling does well in this cup and there's no reason why it shouldn't, roots will begin growing out the bottom. And at some point, if you're using this method for the plants you're putting into your garden, you're going to need to take the plant out. Well, if you have little holes in the cup and a lot of roots growing outside, all those roots are going to separate and break off as soon as you try to take the plant out. But with the bigger triangular cuts like this, when I pull the plant out, I'm less likely to cause some of that root damage. I also like to label the plant that's going to be in here at this point as well. I find it easier to label the cup when it's empty rather than waiting until after I put a seed in. Labeling the cup is one of the benefits of this double cup method. You don't have to worry about getting plant tags and then losing plant tags. The plant will be growing in this cup for its entire life until you take it out and put it into your garden. So the name of the plant stays with the plant that entire time. And believe me, for one of those who have grown a lot of seeds over the years, I've lost a lot of plant tags over the years. And then when it came time to put a plant in the garden, I had no idea what it was. This really helps overcome that problem. And so with it labeled and with the holes in, now it's time to go ahead and fill the cup with potting mix. But I'm not filling it all the way with potting mix. I like to top it off with my seed starter mix. So the last inch 
maybe inch and a half is the seed starter mix. So why am I using two different types of mixes? Well, my seed starter mix is very light. It's easy for that seed to germinate and begin growing. The potting mix is denser. It has compost and worm castings. And while it's ideal for the roots to grow into for all of those nutrients, it doesn't always start as well. And especially if you're using store-bought potting mixes, they can be pretty chunky and pretty dense and your seed might not do well at all. So by allowing the seed to start in this light mix and then grow into that denser nutrient rich mix, I'm giving the seedling the best chance for success. Now with everything ready to go, we can start our seeds. I'm starting black cram tomato seeds in this cup and I'm going to start with two seeds. I'm going to put them just off center. These seeds only need to be about a quarter inch deep so I'm just going to press them in a little bit. And now we've got our black creme tomato seeds ready to go. Now this is a moist mix and I encourage that you start with a moist mix. I will now add a little bit of water to the top. And this is just to get the mix to settle around the seed so that that seed now begins staying evenly moist. You can see how quickly the water begins to run out. That's why we have the second cup to absorb that moisture. And so now to aid the germination, I'm going to cover this cup with just a simple sandwich bag. You could use plastic wrap. It just needs to be covered so that this seed starter mix does not dry out. That seed needs to stay moist during the entire germination time. And it's probably going to be about a week before these seeds germinate. I'll leave this bag on the cup for that entire time. And I probably won't need to water during that time either because this is a pretty effective way to hold that moisture in. Once the seedlings emerge and begin growing, I'll remove the bag because we don't want the plant itself to be in a high humidity environment that could lead to some fungal problems. But for now, this is all ready to go into a nice warm spot. And then we just sit back and wait for the seedlings to emerge. One of the reasons this is a great method for people without a lot of space and maybe only starting a few seeds is that you can just put these cups on a windowsill waiting for them to germinate. And then the sun can help them grow. Because I do have the equipment, I'm using a propagator cover over some of my cups that are resting on a heat mat to help improve germination. There are some other things you can do to make the double cup method more effective as well. When we nestle the cups together like this with these red cups, we don't know how much water we have at the bottom. We really don't know if we're overwatering or underwatering. But if you get the same size cup that's clear and use that as the one you nestle in, now you'll be able to see the water that's draining out the bottom. And because we put the name on the inside cup, now we can just read through it and we know what we're growing. As long as I see water dripping, I know it's not time to water again. And by observing how much water is pooling, you can get an idea of whether you're over or under watering. If there's a lot of water that pools up, you're probably giving too much. If nothing is draining through, then you probably need to water more. Whenever we have that pooled water, it becomes more water for the next time that I do need to add it. That water that I just poured in 
is nutrient rich. As that water drained through, it collected some of those nutrients. So don't toss it. Go ahead and reuse it. And with that mindset of that water being nutrient rich, now it leads us into another opportunity that I mentioned at the beginning. And that's to use this basic method for hydroponics. Now, there's not much of a reservoir underneath here, but if we take a few stones and put them at the bottom, we increase the amount of reservoir at the bottom, and this could actually become a source of nutrients for the plants. As the plants grow, the roots will be coming through the bottom. And so we can pour nutrient-rich water into that bottom reservoir, then put the cup in, and those roots will be feeding from the bottom. Because as the plant grows, we're not as concerned with the top remaining moist all of the time. And so, if your plants need fertilizer, that's an option to fertilize from the bottom in liquid form. And that's the basics behind hydroponics. Now, I'm only growing these seedlings to the point to take out to my garden, but you could continue growing many plants in a pot this size and use that hydroponics basic idea of watering from the bottom with the nutrients that the plants need. For that type of growing, I would suggest that the outer cup be a solid color because direct light can affect the way that roots grow. These cups don't cost a lot, and this is very important. They can be reused. So don't think this is a one-time deal. Yes, I put the name on the cup, but that's because those are the plants that I tend to grow every year. At the end of the season, I'll treat this just like all my other pots. I'll clean it, I'll put it on my shelf, and I'll use it again next year. I'm not sure exactly how many years I can get from it, but I know that I've used some of these Solo Cups three or four seasons without any problem whatsoever. So it's cheap. It's easy, it gives you lots of options as to how many you grow and where you put them for that heat and light, and maybe something you should consider trying. There's other ways to start seeds as well. Go ahead and check out one of these videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.